Hello, how are you doing? I'm Maggie Gray from Sports Illustrated. Nice to meet you, Thank Maggie. you so Memphis. much. This is a really exciting week for the Just Asking Tour. Not very often you get two top five teams mm -hmm. going head to head. We're so pleased to be joined by FSU head coach Jimbo Fisher here on the campus of Florida State University. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you for being here. So let's get started with the first question. You're going to be facing the number one team in the country. Mm -hmm. What's your expectation for the game versus Oklahoma? Well, I think I expect us to prepare well and play well and compete in the game well, and that's the thing we have to remember. We can't get caught up in trying to win the game. We have to get caught up in preparing to win the game and then be ready to play it when the time comes. I know you probably want to keep the routine exactly the same for your mm -hmm. players, but for a head coach, what is this week like for you? It, it'll be the same. We will we'll, we'll, we'll not be any, any different as far as what I do, how much time I spend on media, how much time I spend on coaching, how much time I spend on offense, defense, special teams, whatever it may be. We'll do exactly the same thing, just like the players. Are you a superstitious guy? Eat the same thing every day or any no, kind of No, I'm not like charms? that. I mean, but we, we, we were, we're routine oriented and in, 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 in coaching because you do it so much that, uh, you know, you, you just got to make sure you dot your I's, cross your T's and spend enough time where you need to. Going back to last year, you guys were beaten pretty easily by Oklahoma. 47-17 mm -hmm. was the final score. It was clear that you guys still had a ways to go to be on the same level as them. Mm -hmm. Are you there right now? Oh, I don't know. We'll find out on Saturday. I mean, and uh, we think we've improved since that game, and we'll find out how much we've improved and where we're at, and, and I think this is a great measuring stick. Yeah, how much is this game a measuring stick to see where your team is and exactly who you are? Well, I think it is. It, it, it's early in the season. I think the, I love these games early in the year because if, if you do well, it puts you in a, a great position where you want to go at the end of the year to be where you want to be, and if it's not, it's something you can rebound from, correct, fix, and then we start our conference schedule because this is a – is, is a non-conference game, so then we start our conference schedule next week, and then we go where we need to go. What are you hoping to see out of your team? Well, I just think a team that, that prepares well and goes out and competes very hard, competes hard in the game, is able to execute in the game, um, not beat itself, and be able to give itself a chance to win and be successful in the game. Considering some of the weapons you have on defense, guys like Brandon Jenkins, guys like mm -hmm. Greg Greed, who will be back this week, is the defense the strongest aspect of your team? Uh, you say that. I, I think defense, special teams, like for instance, special teams, we've had 25 snaps that the other team has had. 21 of the 25 have been inside the opponent's 25-yard line, and 19 of the 25 have been inside the 20. So our special teams also have done a great job of providing field position so our, can set our defense up. Our defense is a very strong point. And as our offense, it, it, we're more experienced on defense than probably we are on offense, but we still have a lot of playmakers on offense I feel very good about. How personally did the defense take the loss last year, and what do you think their mindset is going into this game? I don't think they took it personal at all, and, and that's something we, we try not to worry about. You don't take it personal. It, it's, a, it's a game. You, it, when you start taking things personal, I think it starts clouding your thinking. I mean, that was just one game, one situation. They'll learn from it, get better from it, as we did all year. Coach, FSU has not had a 1,000-yard rusher since Warwick done in the mid-'90s. Here's our first user-generated question. comes from Larry Korn. He says, Coach, there's a great deal of talent at running back, and the offensive line seems to be athletic and well-coached. Why haven't the Seminoles been able to get more from the running game? Well, we did. We averaged over six yards a carry last year and almost or right at high fives or low six. I can't, I'm not sure exactly which one it was. But we used a multitude of running backs. When you use three running backs, and we stay fresh and healthy, and we had a couple guys get banged up last year, so we had to set some guys out. They missed time. And the key to me is not having a 1,000-yard rusher. It's being able to rush for five, six yards to carry when you want to run the football. The expectations this year, mm -hmm. they've been the highest they've been in a, in a while here at Florida State. What do you think is the most important characteristic a team has to have in order to maintain and to play with such high expectations? It has to have maturity, and I think it has to understand the live in the now and that expectations don't mean anything except it's like potential. A great thing to have when you're young is somebody say you have potential. A bad thing to say when you're old is somebody say you have potential. You know, potential is what you're capable of. It's not what you're doing. And, we, and, and to get to expectations and, and that people put on you, you have to live in the now. You have to prepare, you have to play, and then you have to go perform. Is that a hard message to give to young men, teenagers, and sometimes... You know, it isn't if you, if you constantly preach it, and that's something we try to do not just during the season, but we do it year-round. You know, we, our, our word is now, live in the now. What are you doing right now to prepare yourself for the future? Because that's all you can control. We as, we as human beings try to want to control more things than, we, than we're capable of. And all you can control is what you're doing at the present time. Good lesson, probably not just for football, right? <laughs> exactly but for right. Exactly right. Well, our next user-generated question has a little bit to do with expectations. And we got these types of questions a lot from your Seminoles fans. Mm -hmm. And this one's from Corey Goodwin, who said, would anything short of an ACC title or BCS birth be considered a bad year? 
I, I don't look at things that way. All I want this team to be is the best it can be. Because you don't ever know what happens with injuries, what happens with adversities. There's a lot of things that a team has to face. But, you know, when you start – I mean, we want to win the national championship. We want to win the ACC championship. We want to win every game. Those are our goals. But what a team is capable of, I think, often depends on what happens to it. We just want it to be the best it can be. Looking at your quarterback, E.J. Manuel, he's played in some very big games in his FSU career. Mm -hmm. Going into the game versus Oklahoma, what's the one thing you would want him to keep in mind above all else? Because he's going to hear a lot of noise this week. He is. It's, 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 it's not his job to win the game. It's to play the game. He has to play. If, if it turns out that him playing the game means he makes the plays to win it, then do it. If it doesn't, make the checkoffs, hand the ball to who he has to, throw, to hand it to or get the little dump passes to who he has to dump. But just to play in the game, compete in the game, and pretend like you're in the backyard when you were 10 years old. You've coached a lot of great quarterbacks. Does mm -hmm. he remind you of anyone? You know, he, he, he's got a lot of characteristics of a lot of guys. He really does. I mean, he's, he's, he's extremely smart. He's athletic. He's big. He can throw it. He can run. I mean, he has all the tools. But, no, he has a combination of different guys. And I, and I think that's what a quarterback, I think, is what makes him unique, that all of them are different in their own special way, and they have to do it their own way. I think that's where you get in, in bad situations, you start comparing guys to guys. They start believing it, start wanting to play. You can't. You, you can only be yourself. And he has characteristics of other guys, but he has to play and be EJ. I mean, how big of a game is this for him? I, I think it's a big game. I think it's a, it's a great game to, for his preparation, but there's going to be a lot of other big games, you know, the rest of the year. We're going to have to go play Clemson the very next week and start our conference schedule. We have, a, we have the whole conference schedule. We have Florida at the end of the year. Hopefully, maybe we'll have an ACC championship game, which he was fortunate enough to start last year. We have a bowl game. There will be a lot of other big games, but this is a big game, and, and we understand – the circuit, they know what surrounds this game. So I think you'll prepare well and play well. Coach, next user generated question from Vicar Zom. This one's about you. He says, You've worked under several big name coaches and reworked the FSU program to make it yours. Which coach had the biggest influence in the way you shaped your program? You know, I'd say from an inner workings, behind the scenes, day to day stuff, it'd probably be Coach Saban. I say from Coach Bowden, from a lot of things in, 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 in dealing with media and different sections, Coach Bowden, you know, and Les Miles. There were some things that Les did that, that I picked up from him and Terry. I learned from all of them. I, I really did. I learned from all of them. A lot of structure and organization came from Coach Saban. A lot of other things came from Coach Bowden. Even Les Miles was in there. Terry Bowden was in there. You, you learn from everybody, but I would say Coach Saban and Bowden were the two most influential. Anything that comes to mind, like words of wisdom, what would they say to you this week or what will they say if they call you this week? Do what you think is right. The, the thing that <laughs> I think made them, I mean, it made them all successful is they did what they believed was right, didn't listen to anybody else. They, I mean, they listened to everybody, but then they, did, they made their own decision with their own people. Coach, off the field, a bit of a trying year for you, your family. Your young son, Ethan, was diagnosed with Falcone anemia, which is a very rare mm -hmm. disease that affects bone marrow. Now that you're back in the season, how tough is it? I mean, it is. My wife, we're, we have a foundation, Kids First Fund, and my wife is, is heading that up and running it right now, and uh, she's spending the time there while I'm able to coach and do that. And, and then we, we delegate the time, and it's something in our life that, you know, it's, it's part of life. We have to deal with, and we're going to fight and, and continue to fight for every day, and, and we've got it organized how we want to do it. Good luck, and we wish you all the best. Thank you. User-generated question. And this one comes from Steve Rogers. He fast forward to 2020, mm -hmm. and you're still at Florida State. What specific on-field accomplishments would you expect to look back and reflect on? Well, if I'm here, for, if I'm here to 2020, obviously we've been successful <laughs> because it, that's ten year, that's you know, nine years from now and, and where we're going. So, I mean, you know, we've hopefully won some ACC championships and hopefully maybe we've won a national championship and won a lot of football games. But more importantly, developed a lot of young men and kept them out of trouble and, and helped them further their lives and, and uh, become better men. Jimbo Fisher, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much.